While the philosophy of the 18th century Enlightenment period addressed such issues as individual liberties, social welfare, economic liberty, and education, these concerns did not translate into major changes for women between the late 1600s and early 1700s. In fact, there are indications that the status of women declined during this period. In 1600s, more than two-thirds of the businesses in London were reported to be owned by women. But by the end of the 18th century, that rate had been reduced to only 10%. Working-class women were expected to participate in the labor force as early as their sixth birthday. If a child was an orphan without anyone willing to provide financial support, as most nurse did for her, the authorities expected the orphan to go into service, usually household work for young girls. Women could rarely marry without a dowry, an amount of money that went to the husband as a sort of investment in the family economic unit. We, women of laboring families, married or single, worked in low status jobs. Middle and upper class women had more economic options, although by the 17th century, as a woman's status increased, her ability to secure productive work diminished, as she was not expected to be in a situation where she would have to work. Many progressive English men of the day believed that education was a paramount required for a civilized society. Educational opportunities were extended to middle and upper class women in addition to men, but existing attitudes dictated that only men received instruction in the more intellectual subjects, such as philosophy and science, and that women should study subjects that would contribute to their moral development and to their disability as marriage prospects. These subjects included singing, dancing, and languages as demonstrated by the young girls in the household of Moll's first husband, Robin. Moll lessons in on these lessons, giving her an age that most girls in her economic status did not have.